When the lenses of commercial satellites turned toward that familiar shipyard in northern China, a colossal mystery was suddenly thrust upon the world. Could the increasingly defined, unprecedentedly massive hull taking shape at Dalian shipyard be the long-awaited ultimate naval solution for the Chinese Navy, the first nuclear-powered supercarrier, codenamed 004? Recently, a series of satellite imagery and analytical reports have fixed the gaze of global defense observers firmly on Dalian. Liaoning. The evidence seems to be piecing together a breathtaking blueprint. China's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier may no longer be a distant concept, but rather a steel colossus gradually taking shape within the dry dock. This warship, designated Type 004 by external sources, with its rumored dimensions surpassing the active-duty Ford-class carriers, and its mysterious nuclear-powered core, heralds a profound transformation in the blue water naval power landscape. All speculation began with keen observation of details. Analysis of satellite imagery by Japan's National Institute for Basic Problems reveals that a keel exceeding 270 meters in length has been laid within the dry dock at Dalian shipyard since early this year. More crucial evidence emerged in recent images. Within the ship's taking shape hull sections, two large frame structures measuring approximately 16 meters long and 14 meters wide are clearly visible. Coincidentally, the internationally renowned military analysis firm Jane's Defense also released an independent analysis. It pointed out that satellite images reveal two distinct compartments, measuring approximately 15 times 15 meters on the hull, whose structural features closely match the layout of reactor containment vessels and nuclear-powered ships. These frames are surrounded by multiple layers of shielding material, likely intended to protect a nuclear reactor. Observers swiftly compared these images with satellite footage of the Ford-class nuclear-powered aircraft carrier under construction at Newport News Shipbuilding in Virginia, USA. They discovered that at a similar stage and location, the American carrier also installed massive frameworks designed to house the nuclear reactor containment vessel. This striking technical similarity has become one of the strongest arguments, supporting the conclusion that the new Dalian carrier employs nuclear propulsion. Beyond the revolutionary breakthrough in propulsion, the carrier's sheer size has sparked boundless speculation. Satellite measurements indicate its waterline beam reaches approximately 40. 3 meters. What does this figure signify? It surpasses the width of the largest active U.S. carrier, the Ford class, and even significantly exceeds that of the decommissioned 80,000-ton conventionally powered USS Kitty Hawk. In naval architecture, there exists a steep positive correlation between waterline width and displacement. Based on this, many analysts boldly speculate that the full load displacement of this new Chinese carrier under construction could easily surpass the 100,000-ton threshold potentially reaching 120,000 tons. This would physically surpass the Ford class, establishing it as a true supercarrier. Such an immense platform not only provides space for more aircraft, aviation fuel, and ammunition, but also lays the foundation for future deployment of high-energy weapon systems and enhanced combat endurance. Shifting focus from the Dalian shipyard to Qingdao, Shandong province, thousands of miles away, another set of developments appears to be paving the way for this maritime behemoth's future. Qingdao, the home port of China's first aircraft carrier, the Liaoning, is undergoing significant infrastructure expansion. Among these developments, the construction of specialized degaussing facilities stands out. Degaussing represents a critical stealth technology for modern warships, directly impacting their survivability. During prolonged operations, vessels accumulate magnetic signatures that make them vulnerable to detection and attack by enemy magnetic mines or exposure to magnetic detection equipment. Regular degaussing operations function like applying a dynamic magnetic cloak to warships. In recent years, a monitoring station at a Northern Theater Command naval base has continuously enhanced its degaussing support capabilities, optimized operational procedures, and reduced processing times. The objective is to ensure the concealment and security of warships, particularly large, high-value vessels. The construction or upgrade of such specialized degaussing piers at the Qingdao base is widely interpreted as preparation for accommodating new flagship vessels with potentially more complex magnetic signatures and greater displacement. Concurrently, satellite imagery has captured a newly built naval airfield near Qingdao equipped with aircraft carrier landing training facilities and large fighter hangars. The simultaneous upgrade of home port support facilities and aviation training bases establishes a comprehensive ecosystem for carrier berthing and combat capability development, strongly suggesting a new, more capable carrier strike group is poised to make this its home. Should the massive vessel in Dalian indeed be a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier? With Qingdao, 
Facing both the Yellow Sea and East China Sea, designated as its home port, the strategic implications would be profound. The core advantage of nuclear propulsion lies in its virtually unlimited endurance. It eliminates the need for frequent refueling from supply ships, enabling sustained high-speed operations over extended periods. This significantly enhances the strategic mobility and forward presence duration of the carrier strike group. Consequently, a nuclear-powered carrier fleet based in Qingdao would no longer be confined to the near seas within the first island chain. It will gain the capability to project power more effectively into the depths of the Western Pacific. Conducting extended combat readiness patrols within the second island chain, and beyond into the open seas. This will substantially expand the strategic depth of China's naval defense and its reach for maritime situational awareness and control over distant waters. Such capabilities hold milestone significance for safeguarding China's expanding overseas interests and maritime transport routes and for building a truly blue water navy. Notably, China's aircraft carrier development follows a distinct dual-track approach. While Dalian in the north may focus on conquering the technological peak of nuclear propulsion, Jiangnan Shipyard in the south continues its own progress. Jiangnan, the cradle of China's first electromagnetic catapult-equipped carrier, the Fujian, is likely building an improved sister ship based on the latest satellite imagery and analysis. This dual-track approach, combining nuclear and conventional capabilities with the North-South Division of Labor, reflects an exceptionally pragmatic and efficient strategy. On one hand, rapidly establishing reliable and formidable regional sea and air dominance through continuous construction, and refinement of mature conventionally powered electromagnetic catapult carriers to address pressing security needs. On the other hand, concentrating resources on conquering cutting-edge technologies like nuclear propulsion to lay the foundation for building core assets for a blue-water navy capable of global deployment. By the mid-2030s, the Chinese navy is expected to develop a modern carrier force comprising multiple conventionally powered carriers and at least one nuclear-powered supercarrier, achieving a historic leap from near-sea defense to a combined capability of near-sea defense and far-sea escort. Of course, we must maintain a clear-eyed understanding that the journey from keel laying to achieving full combat capability remains long. Integrating and testing nuclear propulsion systems, adapting carrier-based aircraft squadrons, and refining the entire fleet's blue water operations system all require time. The challenges encountered during the technical integration of the U.S. Ford-class carrier also remind us that any leap forward in development comes with complex engineering hurdles. China's Ministry of National Defense has consistently maintained a restrained yet clear stance on aircraft carrier development. China will advance carrier construction steadily, comprehensively considering all factors based on national security needs and technological advancements. Developing aircraft carriers is not about engaging in an arms race with any country but about resolutely safeguarding national sovereignty, security, and development interests while maintaining regional peace and stability. Looking back at China's aircraft carrier journey, from refurbishing and completing the Liaoning, to independently building the Shandong, to pioneering the electromagnetic catapult system on the Fujian, each step has been solid and resolute. Today, the massive silhouette emerging from the Dalian shipyard may well herald the next leap forward.